Not every Spartan story follows an exact script. A student athlete's journey through college is full of both challenges and opportunities. In order to create an experience of a lifetime, each student must believe in themselves because for some, the road to greatness is often the road less traveled. I'm from the east side of Detroit. I started playing football in my neighborhood probably around the age of four, probably four and five. I started playing at a young age because uh, my big brothers and big cousins was out there playing and I will just always be with them. And I didn't really start playing organized football until um, I was eight. Tony will continue to play football through his youth and become the star quarterback at Crockett High School. But as colleges began to recruit Tony, they saw his value being at the wide receiver position. We had this seven on seven tournament in, um, at Ohio State and I played wide receiver. I played a little bit of quarterback and I played wide receiver. I was just out there making plays. I mean, I was trying to, you know, just go out there and show them that I, I'm not just, you know, a quarterback. I can go out there and make plays on some of the best, best talent around the nation. And that's when I thought Big Ten schools started to, you know, seek out on me. And like right after that, that's when I received a call from uh, Coach D'Antonio letting me know that I had an offer from Michigan State and that was my, this was my first offer. I kind of knew in the back of my head this is where I wanted to be. I kind of knew how, how I um, interacted with the coaches. The chemistry I had with them, they kind of felt at home. And that's one thing I really, that really uh, persuaded me to, you know, commit. After his red shirt season, Tony would find himself on the field, but not as a wide receiver. First and 10 at the 47 of MSU. Person winds up and throws left sideline, nearly picked off by Tony Lippett. We had a need at, at corner, so we moved him over there about uh, three games in, and he ended up starting. And the transition was kind of hard. Sometimes I just, you know, I was just like, man, I just want to go back to receiver. But I knew this would help me. In some kind of way this would help me because he was trying to figure out a way to get me on the field at an early age. Ball at the 15-yard line of MSU. Vandenberg in the shotgun. Takes the snap, fires right side. Caught by Derby, but he fumbles the ball. Scooped up by Tony Lippett, he's out over the 20, and then that will do it. It was a great thing for him, you know, believe in me, and it made me really believe in myself, you know, go out there and really, he's trying to get you on the field, he's, he's believing in you, he's trusting you to make the right decision out there, and he's trusting your ability, even though you're a young guy out there, to, you know, go out there and just play loose and enjoy and embrace the situation. And that's one thing I just try to tell myself, you know, go out there, have fun, and embrace it. Learn from it. Eventually, you know, you'll probably be back at a uh, wide receiver, but right now your job is to learn corner and be, be good at it. Don't just go out there and just go through the emotions and things like that because that can also create a negative vibe, which you don't want. Although it took Tony a while to find a permanent position on the team, once he did, he didn't waste any time making his impact. Cook, drop it back deep. He'll take that shot, lift it. Michigan State up big on the number two team in America. Cook, nickel blitzer picked up. Touchdown, Tony Lippett, the junior from Detroit. Well, I mean, I, I think that's just a, a tribute to him. Um, he could always see, he always knew that he had the ability uh, to make the plays. It just came upon a, upon a time where I just knew my, you know, my time was running out here and I didn't want to waste my time, and I just, I just needed to believe in myself. What you're getting right now is you're getting a guy that's really enjoying playing, very aggressive, um, and like I said, enjoys every moment of practice. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fun to watch. This year, I, I would say would allow me to uh, have the growth I have now. It's probably last year, just experiencing the big games, experiencing making plays in the, uh, in the big games and just knowing that you can, you can do it. I mean, nobody's gonna stop you, but you know, really kind of yourself. And if you don't stop yourself, and if you practice, and you practice hard, and you prepare hard, and you work hard outside of just the mandated things that we do, that it will pay off. Has time to set up. Now fires down the left sideline for nice Tony catch. Lippett. What wow. a catch. It don't get no bigger than that, George. That's a big time NFL Super Bowl type of catch there. Tony Lippett. Right now, we just try to keep the ball rolling. That's one thing we kind of really focus on, we really kind of keyed on is um, playmakers making plays and just having fun out there and doing your job. He's a great young man, 
he's a joy to be around and uh, you know I, I find myself saying this a lot of times but wish we had a hundred of them. Boy has he come a long way when they played here in 2011. He was on my boards Gus is the third team left corner. Now he's a terrific running back. Lip it in motion. They'll give it straight ahead. Langford still running. Touchdown Spartans. Jeremy Langford becomes the first 100 yard rusher against Ohio State this year. Much like Tony Lippett, Jeremy Langford's career at Michigan State has been an adventure. Uh, Jeremy Langford from John Glenn High School, which is uh, in Detroit, suburb of Detroit, is Keyshawn Martin's high school. Um, a guy who plays, who probably play every skill position um, that we have. Um, we'll play him at tailback slash wide receiver. You know, that's the difference. You know, when you look at these guys, I think like I, I mentioned early on, you know, you have an opportunity to get on the field because they're great football players, but they start new now. They start their whole process over, and so it'll be a challenge for, a, for the guys to come in, and they'll have to overcome some hurdles, but they have the natural ability and the instincts to play at a high level and to play now. Having come in as an offensive threat, Langford was also moved to the defensive side of the ball in order to help utilize his talent. Uh, it's very challenging. It's frustrating. But at the same time, you know, I felt like the Coach D was trying to get me on the field somewhere. And at the same time, I had to realize that we had, you know, Larry in front of me and, and Le'Veon, who was in the NFL, and I was in front of me. And there was a lot of talent in front of me. He was trying to give me a chance to, to be able to play. And almost like it was scripted, the first time he ever touched the ball in a game would foreshadow what his future had in store. Well, guys, a lot of new guys are getting work in this quarter right here, so let's see what they can do. And yeah, they got to be careful on third and seven. Busting up the middle, Xavier Stinson, but he fumbles the ball as he reaches the 40. This thing is scooped up. Still with a pigskin for the Spartans. Still with it is Jeremy Langford. Langford into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU! Yeah, I just had to make a play. I haven't, I haven't been out there. I had to show him I could do something out there. So I, had, I couldn't get tackled. I had to score. I had to make a play out there. And I can remember uh, uh, being there. I was on the sideline at the time. I remember seeing it and, and thinking to myself, wow. I just remember being very impressed. And uh, I just saw, saw him do that. And I'm like, wow, it's pretty good. He just sort of waited his time out. And 2013 came, and he really came into the season as sort of just one of a number of guys who was going to be competing for that tailback position. I remember going out camp when Coach D said I was starting, and at that time it was like a, a you know, like weight off my shoulders to feel like I, I finally you know got something that I want my goal. So I came to Michigan State, but at the same time I had to keep working to get the carries. You know, Indiana game when I finally you know did that and, and earned the carries that I was getting. And it just, it felt good at the top. It's, it's a goal that I was, one, that was mine since I, my freshman year. And I finally accomplished that goal and it's feel good. And now I just got to continue to work hard and be the better player and teammate. Uh, he asserted himself and all of a sudden he became the guy that uh, was running behind his pad. His persistence has helped him achieve success and develop into one of the best running backs in the nation. He's in the end zone. What a run by Jeremy. Touchdown MSU. Yeah, I think that's a lot to do with, my, the, with the players. You know, I know a lot of players who, who believed in me and, and, and trusted me, and for the coaches who trusted me to, get, to give me the ball when we was up and to have to, you know, finish games. And the the lines be <clears throat> patting me on the back, like, let's go, let's, let's break that one. And it feel good to, to break that one and take the weight off Coach D's shoulders and take the weight off the coach's shoulders and the player's shoulders. He's, he's at a point now where uh, all that in the past has probably helped him. You know, I think as he reflects back, he'd probably tell you this, that, uh, uh, you know, it made him stronger. And, uh, and, and it had to, because he, he went through, uh, again, some struggles there as far as, you know, playing those other positions and maybe, you know, maybe didn't turn out like he had planned. And now all of a sudden, uh, he's sort of, uh, he's found a home and uh, feels good about it. And uh, uh, people feel good about him. And uh, I'm just happy to, happy to see him having that success. There's no question that we've not been in the Rose Bowl last year without Jeremy Langford and the work that he did, had done. And, uh, you know, right now as, as we move forward, uh, you know, he's a guy that people have to stop. For Mark D'Antonio and the Michigan State Spartans, the team comes first. Along with that mentality, 
comes the philosophy to get the best players on the field. We recruit football players here. There's no question about that. You know, the guys that we recruit play a lot of times play offense, defense, multiple positions, and you really don't know where they're going to end up until really their end of time here. I think Coach D does a great job at that, He's just trying to get his players on the field because he doesn't want anybody sitting on the sideline behind and telling the players when they can be somewhere in the field helping our team. And he just want people to have an impact on whatever they're doing, on special teams, on offense, on defense, and to help, our, help them have a good season. So, you know, I feel like Coach D cares about his players and he wants, wants them to be the best player they can be. Coach D believes in the players he recruits. And um, if he feels there's a need somewhere and he feels you can feel that need, then he's going to push for it. I mean, he's not just going to throw you right there. He's going to talk to you. He's going to bring you in, communicate with you on um, his visions. So it's always for the betterment of you. And it also, you also kind of know that you will be back at that natural spot in which you were recruited at because you just feel in a void that he felt was a need and a necessity for this team. And if he believed in you to go and do that, then why not believe in yourself? And why not try to practice them techniques and do these things to get yourself on the field at an early age because most of us it happens to us at an early age because you see he's believing in you and he don't want your talent to just sit there on the side. I continually challenge our coaches they use them or lose them so it's pretty uh, it's pretty simple if they're not getting the plays that they need to get on the game days that, um, that we're involved in then and I think they're a great athlete then we're going to look to use them in other areas as well at least give them that op opportunity. You, you understand that the, the team comes first and you know whatever it takes to win a national championship, uh, which is what we're striving to do, um, we got to put the best players out there. So you know there's no hard feelings. There's no you know upset about you know if a guy at wide receiver he got to go over to the defensive play. It's just hey if he's going to play over there, make sure he gets a lot of plays, get better, but then also help us win. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the excitement here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. To me, there's no rivalry like an in-state rivalry. This game game means everything to Michigan State players and Michigan players all over the world. The Michigan State Spartans are about ready to take the field, led out by Mark D'Antonio, who has the best winning percentage of any Spartan head coach ever against the rivals from Ann Arbor. We are just about ready to go. This the 107th meeting between the Spartans and the Michigan Wolverines. Shotgun snap to Connor Cook with Langford to his right. Throws right side. Tony with a good catch wow. with a sun in his face. Michigan is starting to show some blitz. And here's the shotgun snap to Connor Cook. Lost it over the middle. Caught by Keith Mumphrey at the 25. Cuts to his right and is hit down at the 21-yard line. Lippert and McGarrett Kings to the right. End around handoff, no, he faked the handoff to McGarrett Kings. Connor Cook kept the football, and he's inside the five, hit down at the four. Mangans Leichert, the eye offset right by Pendleton in front of Jeremy Langford. Jeremy up the middle to the goal line, powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans score first in East Lansing. Snap, fumble in the backfield on the handoff. The Spartans are all over it. The Wolverines battling to keep it. No signal yet. It is a Michigan State recovery. Lippin and Mumphrey wide side left. Connor Cook under center. They'll run it right with Jeremy Langford. Another great power run by Jeremy. Josiah Price in motion left to right. Hand off to Jeremy Langford. Left tackle. Jeremy to the 25, almost slips down, stays on his feet. Davion Smith, the lone setback. Hand off to Davion Smith, pitches it back to Gardner, wants to throw downfield. He'll be swarmed down. The trick play doesn't work at all. Three wide receivers, takes the shotgun snap. Floats it out right side, it's caught, but the receiver goes right down, bang, down goes Justice Hayes. Pendleton in front of Hill. Short drop by Connor Cook. Floats it down the right sideline. Great grab by Whoa. Aaron Burbridge. Took it away from the Wolverines. Snap to Gardner. Here come the Spartans. Devin Gardner in the grass. And they'll blow the whistle. Connor Cook has Jeremy to his left. Hands the ball to Jeremy out of the shotgun. Whoa. Finds a crease up the middle. Angles to his right at the 40. First and 10 Spartans at the Michigan 25. Connor Cook. 
Swings it over the middle for Jeremy Langford. Gets out of one tackle, now another. He's at the 15, he's at the 10. Jeremy Langford finally dragged down. Andrew Blacker, the tight end, starts in motion left. They'll run Jeremy that way. Bumps out of one tackle and lunges to his right for the score. Touchdown, MSU! And that will do it. Our halftime score in this battle for the Paul Bunyan Trophy in the great state of Michigan. The Spartans 14 and Michigan 3. The second half about to begin at Spartan Stadium. It's 14 to 3 Spartans. But the defense for Michigan State has to crank it up and really invoke fear in Devin Gardner in the Wolverine offense. He's lined up to the right of Devin Gardner. Shotgun snap. Gardner's got time. Right side, oh, it is picked, picked it. off. It is intercepted. R.J. Williamson's got it. Down the left sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown, R.J. Williamson. Touchdown, MSU. Second down 10, low snap to Gardner. Hands Whoa. to Hayes, and he'll be manhandled by Tawan Jones. He rode him down for a big loss. Tight end in motion, it's Gleichert. Play fake to Langford, Connor Cook. Stands in that pocket, throws along the right sideline, caught by Tony Lippin. He's going to beat all the Wolverines to the end zone. He's at the 10, the 5, the goal line. Touchdown, MSU. A 70-yard score. Delano Hill beat by Lippin, and the Spartans lead 27-3. Has Justice Hayes to his right. The snap by Gardner pushes it over the middle. Oh, it's big. picked off. It's picked oh, off by Jawan Jones falling down. It was some sort of half shovel pass throw by Gardner and Jawan Jones picked it off, falling down. Spartans at their 14. Offset eye right. Jeremy Langford running that way, breaks a tackle, now another. He's got a first down out over the 20 to the 21 yard line. Spartans using a lot of time. Connor Cook. Hands to Jeremy, off left tackle. Jeremy Lankford with a first down. Lang offsets the eye right in front of Jeremy Lankford. Hand off to Jeremy, cuts off left guard. On his feet at the 20, he's at the 15, and he is finally neck tied down at the 10 yard line of Michigan on the near left sideline by Gerard Wilson. There's a chance for that touchdown now. Lankford starts in motion left. Hand off to Jeremy, running to his right. He's got some green in front of him. Gets there to the goal is. line. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. That'll put some frosting on this cake. Time will run out. The Spartans smash the Wolverines again. Michigan State 35, Michigan 11. That's your final score. Extending their school record winning streak over Michigan and Spartan Stadium to now four games. That's right, George. Jeremy Langford, as a senior, put that team on his shoulders and said, ride me the whole way. Uh, it means a lot. You know, this, this is my last year, my senior year, to play this team and a lot of players that I came in with. So I know we was extra hype about that. And just being a win again like we did was exciting. And it makes, you know, we playing for future Spartans and past Spartans. So it felt good to come out here with a win. Big game. Uh... You know, just a big game. I think our players played extremely well, came out, played very hard. Uh, you know, ran the football. You know, when you can run the football, good things are going to happen. We stopped the run. Uh, they got one late, but uh, you know, I thought we played a great football game. And, uh, you know. I think just the, the coaches trusted me, and then the offensive line trusted me. And they opened big holes, and it's, it's my job to, you know, keep them with those, to keep them happy, and, and make, make get the yard, get the positive yards. And like I said, the offensive line did a great job blocking the front. Outstanding job. Ran the football, stopped the run. 
Ran the football, stopped the run. A big play started to happen in the game. And it was sheer domination, guys. You can call it anything you want. It was sheer domination. Very, very proud, everybody. That's, that's six out of eight, six out of the last seven. Okay? That's what we do. That's what we do. Okay? Green on green, baby. Green on green. 365, let's go. Hey, on the clock again. Wait a minute.